All right, everyone. Rallying wrestling fans from all over the internet. This is Talking Smack. A very uh, special edition. We've got a lot to talk about. How's everyone doing? So, uh, always, always botching with the intros. Anyway, how's everyone doing? A, a, a busy day, a very happening day. If this is what people meant by AEW is good for business, like I said, whose business? It's good for websites. It's good for podcasts. Uh, yeah, is it going to be good for the uh, for for the fans? That remains to be seen. Uh, of course, the big story of the day, uh, as I posted earlier this morning, I posted the Moxley uh, interview with on talk of Jericho, explosive, very very reminiscent of CM Punk from uh, five years ago with uh, Cole Cabana. Although I would I would say it's not as bitter, uh, not really. If you really cut to it, not not too much was revealed that people didn't already know or suspect. Uh, but I guess it's always good to hear to hear these shoot interviews. Uh, so we'll, we'll we'll talk we'll talk about that a lot a lot about that. And I know uh, people already have made reviews about this uh, po- podcast and shoot interview. Listen, if uh, for a lot of people, for a lot of fans, D, just like CM Punk. The CM Punk shoot interview from four, four, five years ago. It feels good. It makes you feel good to hear these things. It's it's called the confirmation bias. All right, I, I I that's a term I use a lot on this page. It makes you, it reaffirms what you already believe. Uh, it, it, you interpret the information how you uh, into your beliefs already. But I'm not gonna uh, bury anybody on this. Uh, I'm not gonna bury Vince. I'm not gonna bury Moxley. I'm not gonna bury AEW. I'm going to, I'm going to just, I'm not even going to uh, go through the whole podcast verbatim, but we'll, we'll just talk about uh, some points. Uh, and basically the gist of the podcast was the guy was, uh, Dean Ambrose, John Moxley, he was burnt out. He was, it, it's, it's just to hear it in his voice. And this, uh, this is a, this is my field of study. I, I'm, 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 I'm pursuing a master's degree in industrial organizational psychology, uh, uh, which is uh, organizational development. This, if this is where companies, when companies go have problems, uh, I that's where people like me come in. Uh, I go, uh, people like me go in and try and fix it when interventions, try to assess what the problems are, what's causing the problems, the well-being of the employees, what, the, the uh, lack of productivity. Why is the company failing? Why is the company having problems? Where are, where are the problems happening? Who, what's the underlying root causes? That's that's the main thing. When you look at this, and if you're trying to analyze the problems with WWE, what are the underlying root causes of these problems? And it's not just fits. If I, I I really that's that's the lazy way out. Just to scapegoat Vince. I keep telling you. Stop scapegoating Vince. And now people are going to say, oh, Frank, but you heard Dean Ember. Yes, Vince is the last say. And again, he's, whoever said that Vince was a creative genius? <laughs> Vince McMahon is not a creative genius. If you haven't heard or uh, heard uh, something to wrestle with Bruce, uh, Bruce Pritchard podcast, he, Vince has never been a creative genius. Vince, Vince's forte is not the wrestling, okay? Vince's forte is business and television. The guy has an idea, a very good idea, of what wor- what works well on television and what doesn't. Does he is he always right? No. Again, I'm not defending anybody. And. Everybody likes to point out Dean Ambrose's last line, John Moxley, whatever you want to call him, his last line in the, in the, in the, in the Chris Jericho to, uh, podcast today. He, when he says it was Vince is the problem, the creative process is killing the company. Yeah, maybe. Listen, just like the CM Punk interview f- from five years ago, everybody was like, see, I told you, I told you, I told you, I told you. Again, 
there's, uh, there's, uh, you have to look at these things critically. All right. If you just want to, if listen, if it just makes, if you hear this, if you hear the podcast, uh, CM Punk shoot its view, you hear the Dean Ambrose shoot its view, and it makes you feel good, and that's what you want to take away from it, then that's it. Then click off, click off. Don't watch this, and 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 that's it. Just click off and go and go through life, just not thinking critically. Be a sheep. Did you see that 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 uh, uh, I I put up a uh, a post. Uh, on my uh, on my Facebook page before, if everybody is thinking the same things, then some then nobody then somebody's not thinking. I, I'll, let me. I have to now. I have to put it up because that's that. I can't believe that that it actually fits today. Of course, it takes uh, fifty seconds to to load up. If everyone is thinking alike, then somebody isn't thinking. That's from General George Patton. But the point is. I told I tell everybody when I do these uh, streams, I, I like to give the unbiased uh, uh, view analytics. I am not defending anybody. Again, if, if if WWE goes out of business next week, who cares? I don't care. If AEW goes out of business in December, I don't care. I'm just here to to analyze. Okay. And Dean said at the end. It's the creative process, but see, there's a lot of things. Uh, I wish I had the tra- I had the transcript, uh, but everybody already has checked uh, and put out uh, wor- uh, the quotes that they want to put out. But he said, "Me and Vince are like Mentos and Coca Cola. We don't mix. They have he it that think about what he just said. Him and Vince are like uh, Mentos and Coca Cola. You know what happens with Mentos Coca Cola?" When you put a Mentos in, in a glass of Coca-Cola, it starts fizzing. It just doesn't mix. Combustible. They have they had creative differences. All right, we've we this is nothing new. We've we've heard rumors about this for for years. Dean Ambrose saw himself in a, as, as a different character. Vince McMahon sees him as 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 a different character. He sees him as the goofy guy. And do you, you just listen to any Bruce Pritchard podcast? Ha ha ha! I love it. That's great. And of course, Dean Ambrose was, was doing the impression. The impression say how it was a grind to uh, the creative process. A grind. I will give him this, and I've said it a million times. And see again, I'll have to. Uh, I always get heat on this, especially from guys like James, because he just doesn't understand what I say. He's another one. He just whatever I say, he takes uh, uh, and misconstrues it, lies, doesn't understand, and runs. With it. What have I been saying for, for years for, for, on on these streams? What what did I say about Cody? Uh, what the Stone Cold? When Stone Cold says a lot of the wrestlers are just happy, a lot of these guys are just happy to be on TV. What do you think he means when he says a lot of these guys are walking on eggshells? What do you think he means? Then you have the 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 few that 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 we hear about because these guys have balls. I've said it a million times. You heard Cody Rhodes; he would go up to the writers, come up with ideas. The writers, the writers uh, sitting there with his laptop, pretending to be typing, uh, ignoring him. Uh, Triple H is telling him, uh, uh, "Cody, don't shoot so high." Dean Ambrose doesn't like his lines; doesn't like his script. Uh, so he he goes to Vince McMahon. Oh, but Frank, I thought you said Triple H. He's not gonna bother with Triple H. He's going over Triple H's head. If he goes to Triple H to change something, see, this is what people don't understand. If he goes to Triple H and asks Triple H, "Hey, I don't like what this fucking writer wrote. I don't like this," you know, you know, Triple H is gonna say, "Okay, well, you, we're gonna have to go talk to Vince. Only he could change it." People still defending Triple H and all this. And I'm glad that he took a shot today at Triple H. That him and Vince are ruthless businessmen. For all these, all you people who have this fantasy of Triple, that Triple H is going to take over uh, when Vince is gone, first of all, Triple H isn't taking over anything. His wife, Stefani, is going to be the CEO, okay? So forget Triple H. Triple H is going to be who he is. He's going to stay in his position. Yeah, maybe he'll have the uh, the close to the final say. Where's where's Triple H's? Where's all of Triple H's good ideas? 
Triple H is in charge of the writers. The writers are producing all this garbage. What this what this shoot interview told me today is what Raven has always said. Raven, Scott Levy. Listen, in the end, they're gonna push who they want to push. They didn't want they never wanted to push Dean Ambrose. And he pretty much reaff- reaffirmed that say that when they broke up the shield, they had no plans for him. But guess what? But did you hear what he said after that? He said, I got over on my own. Because he's talented. Haven't for years we've been we've been praising uh, we've been uh, singing Dean Ambrose's name that he's one of the best promo guys in WWE. Oh, but did he have garbage before? And another thing people have haven't uh, brought up. It was his idea to come back as a as a heel, just this last year uh, at the end of this uh, in September or October, whatever. It was his idea to come back as a heel. And guess what? That the feud, that feud with him and Seth Rollins, that fans didn't really buy. It was, it, it was, it was like a fart in church. You know why? Because fans didn't want to boo either one of them. They brought the shield, the shield back. Everybody loves the shield. They love the shield. They were rooting for the shield. And then Dean turns on Seth Rollins. The fans didn't want that. They didn't want to root against Dean Ambrose. When he came back in September, he got one of the loudest pops in recent history, in recent years. So, see, that's, these are things that people just gloss over. It was his idea to come back as a heel. Now, what happened after that with the gas mask and the fucking inoculations, whether you think that's funny or you think that's retarded, is it, is it any more retarded than anything else you've seen in the last 12, 15, 20 years? Is it any more retarded than the fucking uh, Triple H having sex with, with, the, with a corpse, kayfabe? Is it any more fucking retarded than Mae Young giving, uh, giving uh, birth to a fucking hand? How many times have I come on here and said, how many times have I posted on the page? Pro wrestling, most of it is awful. When pro wrestling is awful, uh, first of all, the saying goes, pro wrestling is only as good as its script. Okay, I'll say it again. Pro wrestling is only as good as its script. When pro wrestling is terrible, 90% of it is forgettable. When it's okay, 80% is forgettable. When it's really good, 70% is forgettable. What do you think? Everything from the Monday Night Wars, the Attitude Era was gold? No. 30% of it was was, was good. It was memorable. Think about how many things you remember that, that are still relevant today. Or is still fresh in your mind that you could watch uh, clips of from the Attitude Era. So, just well, I'm gonna go just go over uh, real quick. Uh, again, Vince is not a creative genius. This guy always has help. He always had help around him. In the '80s and '90s, he had uh, Pat Patterson, Bruce Pritchard. He had he always had people around him, wrestling people. The Undertaker. That wasn't Vince's idea. That was Bruce Pritchard's idea. What Vince is very good at, Vince's forte is that Vince tweaks ideas. If you give him an idea that's good, he can make it better. Sometimes he makes it worse. Vince McMahon is like a hammer, okay? He's like a hammer. Sometimes he hits a nail on the head, and sometimes he hits a baby in the head. Instead, he's he's like that. He's, 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 he's He's a CEO. He's the owner. It's his company. It's a, he, he runs a comp. He's in full charge of a company that has, has done well. Relative standards, it's the greatest company in the wrestling history. You can't argue that. Whether, whether, you, whether you say it's in spite of him, because of him, or a combination of both. Razor Ramon, it wasn't his idea. 
Scott Hall came up with that. It was the fucking, it was a Scarface imitation. He he didn't want to. Vince didn't even want want to call, uh, let him be called Razor because he Scott Hall tells the story because at the time there was a, a heavyweight boxer named Razor Ruddick. So he he goes all right. Come up with a last name. He goes into the bathroom. He meet, uh, Tito Santana's taking a piss. Hey Tito, what's a good last name for a guy named Razor? Ramon. He goes to Vince. That's it. That's how it works. Vince is Vince, Vince is a businessman. Vince is uh, he's doing fucking meetings with TV deals and networks running setting networks. And again. It all comes down to they're going to push who they want to push. You think if John Cena goes to Vince and says, Vince, I don't like this. Change it. You think they're not going to change it? And does everybody forget about their fucking golden boy, Triple H? Do you remember the stories about him, about the writers, how he used to terrorize the writers back in the fucking uh, Ruthless Aggression era? And the writer used to come to him trembling with the script and he wouldn't even look at it. He'd say, am I, am I going fucking over? No, he'd rip the script up. And guess what? The script to come back changed. Who changed the script? Vince. So here's another, here's another example. As, as much as I want to say it's uh, not, as, not the same as uh, CM, the CM Punk situation, very much so in the sense that these two guys the, the, uh, Punk did get pushed more than Ambrose, but they they don't once they don't have it uh, they don't have you in their plans. It's very tough. Uh, you might say, "Oh, Frank Dean Ambrose, he was he's popular." Yeah, th- that's that's there's a saying for that in, in wrestling in wrestling terminology. D- Dean Ambrose was over with the crowd, but not over with the office. Okay, I'll say it again. He's uh, a wrestler could be over with the audience but not over with the office. It's nothing new. It's been happening in promotions for the last 50, 60 years. Okay? This isn't the first time a wrestler has been getting, has gotten screwed or has been underutilized. It's happened before. Stone Cold Steve Austin in WCW. Everybody wants to praise Dusty Rhodes. Go, go back and listen to the ECW inter- uh, shoot interview. That Steve Austin did. He's making fun of Dusty Rhodes. Nah, baby, we ain't got nothing for you, baby. That's for somebody else. Keeping him down. They, wrestling companies are going to push who they want to push. So, well, let, let's just go over. I'll read a couple of uh, quotes here. He says, and that's another thing I want to bring up. That he said he, he had his mind made up. I, f- I forgot, Eric. I forgot to uh, mention this the other night. That he, they, that video, that video promo he recorded about him, uh, the day his contract ran out, that was all planned. That was all pre-planned. That was him breaking out of jail. And I think it was, uh, they revealed it was ex-wrestler Slick Nick Mondo. Eric Hernandez probably knows him. Uh, that was already done. That was in February. That's when that's when supposedly Dean lied to them that he said, uh, yes, he's a renegade now, just like CM Punk. Uh, that he lied to them in February when he said he 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 was he's tied up with on a film set. So he was he he already he had already planned his escape. And I know this is another thing. He kept talking about and money wasn't the issue. Money isn't the issue. Money it wasn't about the money. They handed him an envelope. He never looked at it, and he and he gave it back. Listen, we all know if, if you're if you're a halfway street smart, you've heard all your life when when you when you hear that saying, when you hear somebody say it's not about the money, when they keep saying it, it's not about the money. Nine out of ten, it is. Oh, oh, Frank, but you heard of it. Maybe maybe he maybe he was looking for. Uh, he says, oh, what am I going to do? Ten million dollars, a lot. Maybe. It was maybe he knew he wasn't going to get that much more than 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 his raise. Maybe if he was making two million, they were offering him three and a half million. All right. So I I don't want to hear this. And don't think what and how he said he hasn't he said today he hasn't even talked money with AEW. Well, officially he I don't think he's even signed with AEW if if you think about it. 
I'll get I'll get to that now because apparently he's not even exclusive to AEW right now. I saw I saw. Let me see. There was a, a, a article. He's he's scheduled. He's scheduled to appear uh, in New Japan Pro Wrestling. Yeah, John Moxley's first New Jersey Pro at New, J New Jersey Pro Wrestling match set versus Juice Robinson for the U.S. title after AEW. Uh, he's booked. Yeah, he's booked for for New Japan Pro Wrestling. So guess what? He's not. He's not even. I, this tells me he's not even signed to AEW. He got paid for the appearance. Will he sign? Yeah, he'll probably sign, which which makes more sense because if they sign him now, he's he's not going to be doing anything until October. So why why pay somebody to uh, be in your company? But that, that maybe he'll still have in his contract that he could go and make uh, dates. New Japan Pro Wrestling confirmed Tuesday that Moxley and Robinson will clash at Roy Goku Sumo Hall in Tokyo for the IWGP United States Championship. A vignette was was made, which made waves on the internet uh, a few weeks ago, and it was similar to similar to the to the to the vignette that we saw when he broke out of prison, and the other one. And he goes on to say he got to the arena, and a bunch of writers came up to him with a bunch of scripts. And, but that happens all the time. He's making it sound. If, 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 don't make it. Don't make it. Don't come all off thinking that's the first time that writers went up to him. That's usually what happens. The talent's supposed to get there at one, and the writers already have their stuff to go over with. That's that's why they, they have to get up there at one. And the thread throughout the show is that Seth Rollins will be challenging me to come out to the ring and fight, and I will pop on the screen and cut a promo. And then I've got like six promos throughout the night, saying various stuff. And at the very end, we finally have a big fight in the ring, right? So it's going to be a long day, a lot of running around. Some are going to be live. Some are going to be pre-taped. Even the pre-taped ones that should take 30 seconds, you know, in WD, it could take 40 minutes. It's a process. The one I'm most concerned with is the in-ring promo at the end of the night. And he, he basically, he, he, <laughs> he talked about the pooper scooper. Listen, I know, but a lot of stuff is corny. <clears throat> but if you hear Bruce Pritchard talk, he says, hey, you got a live mic in your hand. If you want to go off script and cut your own promo, there's nobody that's going to stop you. If you got the balls to take to take uh, the ass kicking in the back when you get there, but if it's great, you know what? They're not going to say anything. If it bombs, you're going to get fucking uh, you're going to get reamed. He says, "Here's how the creative process works in WWE. It doesn't really make any sense. I still don't know how it works, but so now it's like okay." Vince is in the meeting, so we have to try and rewrite it. Send it to the send it, send it to Tukoski, have it reprinted, blah 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 blah. Because if he sees it, uh, it, it he he didn't want he didn't want Vince to see the pooper scooper line because he just knew Vince that's Vince's humor. It's Vince has a st strange, stupid humor. It's nothing new. Again, this is nothing new. This has been going on since 1985. I've been hearing about Vince McMahon being out of touch. Since 1985, I've been hearing about WWE being uh, a success in spite of its against since 1985. It is. Deal with it. He had a problem with saying uh, with saying a line about uh, uh, referring that uh, Roman need uh, Roman deserved leukemia. I, I don't know. I don't know if, uh, if that's okay. But aren't you supposed to be the bad guy? Aren't you supposed to be the fucking lunatic? Isn't that what lunatics say? But I guess he, he I guess that's too too much. I don't know. So basically he goes on and on and on to say this. So listen, all all, all this stuff that he's talking. Great. I've said it for years. If wrestlers aren't happy, go speak up. Go 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 in there with, with, with 20 ideas every day. If all your ideas get shot down, do what he do. Do what Cody Rhodes did. Do what Dean Ambrose did, and quit. Get the fuck out. Nobody's holding a fucking gun to your head. It's just like people who work at their job every day, and every job, every day they get miserable. Oh, I can't wait. Just five days, uh, killing time before the weekend. Oh ho ho. 
and then they go out and fucking get drunk and high on the weekend, blow their pay- paycheck. They're fucking losers. Nobody's holding you at your job. Nobody's holding Dean Ambrose's job. If you don't like it, quit. Oh, but Frank, now they have a healthy alternative. Well, what the fuck have they been having for the last t- t- 10, 12 years? TNA wasn't a healthy alternative. Ring of Honor wasn't a healthy alternative. New Japan Wrestling wasn't a healthy alternative. Even he said he would go to CCW. He, that was one funny thing. He said even if there was no wrestling companies, he would open his own uh, wrestling school and train wrestlers and create his own promotion. That was funny. But listen, I, I get it. He's frustrated. Are there other wrestlers frustrated in WWE? Yeah. The difference, they don't have the fucking balls. And a lot of people now, you're, they're, uh, you're glossing over the fact. Uh, first of all, a lot of these same people that are uh, 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 so happy with this, I never saw them fucking uh, praise Dean Ambrose in the last five years. Oh, he's okay. Oh, his matches are okay. Oh, he go, he's good on the promo, but his matches suck. They keep talking about Brock. He made a, a reference to Brock again. That Vince pays Brock a billion dollars. Oh, see, what I keep telling you about, uh, it's not always about the money. Dean Ambrose sounds a little bit fucking jealous of Brock. And I, people are going to say, oh, Frank, you're a Brock, you're a Brock lover. No, I didn't say that. That's not my quote. He said that. Oh, Vince pays Brock a billion dollars so he could claim him as his traction. Yeah, guess what? He's the only one who fucking brings in some ratings. He's the name recognition. Oh, but Frank, how are people supposed to get over? It? That's the paradox. But then Dean Ambrose said he got over on his own. Right? We said that in the beginning. After they broke up the shield, they had no plans for him. He said it. But he said, I got over on my own. So how come other wrestlers can't get over on their own? Not, they're not talented. I, told, I, t- I keep telling you people, great matches don't draw fucking money. Especially when everybody is having a great match. These matches are not fucking uh, random. This, this, this scripted. They, you heard him say, him and Nia Jax say they were they were going to rehearsal. They rehearse. It's a fucking play. It's a fucking simulation. It's a scene, just like in the movies when Arnold Schwarzenegger fights the fucking Terminator, or when Rocky Balboa fights fucking Ivan Drago. They didn't have a great fight. They choreographed a great fight. But if everybody starts choreographing a great match, guess what? It loses its luster. Oh, boy. He says that it was, it's killing his company. Well, I, how? Brock is not even there. Oh, but that's the problem. When Brock has the title, he's not. He never. He's never there. So he's he's not being force fed. That's another thing. If you're a Brock fan, you should be fucking irate how WWE has booked Brock Lesnar over the last four years. They book him like garbage. Yeah, they book Brock Lesnar like fucking garbage. What a waste. And it's funny. The last two times that Brock Lesnar lost, dropped the title, guess what happened? The ratings fucking tanked. He lost the title after SummerSlam, the ratings tanked. He lost the title after WrestleMania, the ratings tanked. Oh, but Frank, it's just not him, it's other things. Yeah, well, th- th- that's that's thought to be a trend. But that, that that's what I have to say. Listen, here, 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 here's here's here here's the uh, the cherry on top with this with Dean Ambrose, John Moxley, whatever he wants to call himself. Good for him. I'm he he took he, if uh, he took my advice of of if, he, if you're not happy and uh, you, you're exhausted all options, quit. Get the fuck out. Nobody's holding a gun to your head. There is no professional pride. If you work at McDonald's and you're fucking tired of fucking making Big Macs all day and putting salt in the fries, and you ask the, the manager, can I have a promotion? I, no, 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 not right now. Not right now. Quit. I, those people have a tougher time than quitting because they have to pay them. Uh, they, they have, they, they're fucking destitute. 
These wrestlers are not most ninety percent of these wrestlers. Not just they have money. They just know a lot. Trust me, a lot of wrestlers in WWE know that without the big machine, they're fucking trash. That's why I call them trash. You might think your favorite wrestlers, all that, but trust me, as soon as they go to a different company and they have that name stripped from them, that that recognizable name that that you've known from WWE, and they go to other companies, they're fucking garbage. Look at the last ten years with TNA. When an ex WWE wrestler shows up at TNA, <laughs> nothing. One out of ten maybe succeeds. One out, maybe one out of ten makes a fucking blip on the radar. Which brings me to my point. Now, John Moxley, he thinks he's all that. Maybe he is. Maybe he isn't. He has now. He'll have the creative freedom. Now, the ball's in his court. Now we'll see October 1st, start October 1st, we'll see the creative genius. What is it going to be? That he's just going to go hardcore? Is he going to come up with a fucking million dollar uh, angle? Or is this creative genius just going to be uh, doing taking shots at WWE like all the rest of these fucking guys? Is that all they could do? Is that is that is that, is that what AEW is going to be all about? Taking shots? Breaking the fourth wall and taking shots at WWE? I'm telling you, you manager. I always have to fucking say this: manage your expectations, okay? With AEW, with anybody. Yeah, they do one show. And speaking of that one show that everybody's fucking gushing about, because Dave Meltzer's a fucking cuckold. Google Trend suggests strong buy rate for AEW or oh, nothing. The wrong, wrong. <laughs> Just because they trended at number two and number three Saturday doesn't mean that everybody fucking bought the pay-per-view, dumb motherfuckers. Dave Meltzer's a stupid motherfucker. It's either two things. Either Dave Meltzer's a fucking shill or he's a fucking retarded motherfucker. I don't know which one. Or he's a fucking mark. I don't know which one. Maybe a combination of all three. He's a fucking shill, a retarded motherfucker, and a dumb mark. Google Trend just means that people were typing an AEW double or nothing in the in the Google search bar. Like me, I kept I kept typing it in uh, AEW free stream online. Uh, things like that doesn't mean that fucking the, the whole planet was fucking uh, buying the pay per view. Wrestling fans are either cheap or broke or both. They're not going to spend fifty dollars on a fucking pay per view. Believe me. Didn't you learn that uh, before the network? <coughs> Everybody had to go over each other's houses and, and chip in five, six dollars, ten dollars. The food, oh my God, no, no, I don't want anything. But then they fucking uh, stick in their hands. When the food comes, they're sticking their grubby fucking uh, slimy hands in, in, the, in the food. They want free food. They're either, free, they're either broke or they're fucking cheap. Saturday Night Showcase boasted over 200,000 Google searches. So what? That's a Google search. That doesn't mean there was 200,000 buys, you stupid fucks. And even if there was, that's not a lot. That's worldwide. In the whole world. How many people are in, the, how many people are in this world? Eight billion? Oh, but Frank, that's good. It's not 200,000. Some estimate, some estimate the figure to be... <coughs> Let me see. Roger, girl, uh, Roger, I guess this is the new fucking uh, uh, stupid authority on this shit. Roger reports the early rumors going on backstage in AEW is that the pay-per-view pulled in somewhere between 100,000 to 200,000 buyers. That is a very good result for the first pay-per-view, especially $50. Is it really? This is their WrestleMania. Four months worth of, of promotion and hype. <clears throat> but the truth is that only hardcore AEW fans bought this. There's only about 300,000 hardcore AEW fans. Nobody gives a shit about AEW. And when I mean that, outside of the wrestling world, even in the wrestling world, nobody gives a shit about AEW. People barely give a shit about WWE. How many buys did uh, AEW's Wrestling Double Nothing do? Heard that the number 100,000 was mentioned backstage, but also hearing 200,000. That's Dave Meltzer. I'd say 100,000 would be great, 200,000 would be pressed. Okay, so 
go go halfway 150,000 buys which is cutting cutting those two reported arrests uh, of course the uh, the people who write this uh, AEW fans that number of pay-per-views is no indication of how many people how many people would tune in to see the show for free on TNT no fucking shit you fucking dumb fuck for free what did I say the other night good shows versus good profitable shows <clears throat> what do you think caused the demise? Of, what do you think causes the demise of, of WCW? What do you think causes the demise of a, t- a company like TNA? Yeah, people might watch them on fucking TNT when it's for free. During the Monday Night Wars, when people are watching Raw and they, it's a commercial, they switch to WCW. And then when WCW goes to commercial, they switch to Raw. And when Raw has a fucking garbage segment, they switch to WCW. And that's not making money. And after after uh, uh, mid mid nineteen ninety nine, WCW was was making garbage money. If they, they, their 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 uh, pay per view company was different from Turner Sports, that's why they they that's why they didn't care. That's why they would put these big pay per view type matches on TV. That's why Eric Bischoff only cared about ratings and not the pay per views. They weren't making money from pay per views. Also, keep in mind that number obviously won't calculate the number of people who either watched the event on free streaming site or kept up with our results of ringside. Hey, well, what's the fucking difference? That's why WWE got rid of their pay-per-view pl- platform. Because, like I said, wrestling fans are either cheap or broke. You're going to get four or five of them together. Or you're gonna get people stealing the fucking pay per view, or you're just gonna get people who are just happy getting live updates, and then maybe next week they'll find something on YouTube or Daily Motion or Vimeo and and watch 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 the highlights, like I did the next, like I did Sunday morning. I found an hour and twenty minutes of condensed highlights on YouTube. When they go on TNT. You're going to get, I said it, you're going to get the AEW hardcore fans, which is about 300,000. I'll be nice, 350,000. You're going to get the curious, like me and you, him, 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 the curious dumb people who watch WWE Raw and SmackDown already, who are going to tune in for the first for the first night, the second night, figure about 300,000, 400,000. And maybe you'll get a few people who, who were tuning into TNT. Oh, Wow. Wrestling's back on TNT. Oh, wow. I remember that guy, Jericho. Wow, he got so old. And what's this? Oh, I know that's up. If they get 800,000 the first night, that'll be impressive. And like I've said, I've told you, manage your expectations. If they don't pull it, if they don't have an impressive show that first week, the second week, it's over. Their audience will be cut in half. You'll be getting. The AEW hardcore fans will always tune in, no matter what, 350,000. And then you'll have the wrestling junkies who want to watch wrestling six, five, seven days a week, 24-7. The WWE fans who now, they, they could watch AEW on Tuesdays because SmackDown ain't until Friday. So you'll get 200,000. So they'll probably average 600,000 fans. Over, over the course of time. And they better put on good shows. But anyway, so that, that's, that's, that's the takeaway from, from, from Dean Ambrose. He, listen, the takeaway is they, they, they don't want to push him. They, he was only going to go so far. In the end, uh, whether Vince lied to him or Vince or whatever, or he was funny. He was frustrated. I understand. Is this a, is the creative process in WWE a fucking bitch? Yeah, it's tough to make it. It's a miracle to make it. Hey Jeremiah, sorry you came out late. I was just saying that yeah, everything Dean Ambrose said is correct, but uh, the creative process in WWE is a bitch. But like I said. Uh, like Raven has said, they're going to push who they want to push. 
they, by his own by his own words, his own admission, they didn't they didn't want to push him. They had no plans to push him. He got over on himself, over by himself. He did the right thing. He he exhausted all possibilities. He would go in there with ideas. I don't know if he, I don't even know if he did go in there ideas. That's another thing. I have to go back and look at hear that interview. Maybe he wanted things changed. Did he come in there with new ideas? Did he come in there with like, hey, why don't we do this? Or why don't we write this? That's another thing. But again, just like the CM Punk interview five years ago, I know it feels really good for a lot of people. Like I said, confirmation bias. Uh, just hold off on that. I'm not going to make the same mistake I did five years ago because there's always two sides to the story. So uh, whether who do you want to believe or not, it doesn't matter. He's gone. If more WWE wrestlers get the balls and they want to leave, let them. Leave. They'll leave. Let them, they want to. AEW wants to sign them. Let them sign them. Then the ball goes into their court. You, if you're that fucking great, if you think you're that great, well now here, here's your chance. You're in AEW. They have creative freedom. Whatever uh, you 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 could you could be the lunatic character. Let's see how great you are now. Uh, besides bash. Besides, like I said. Great is not going to be – that's only going to last the first few weeks, the first month, where uh, on an AEW on TV, Jeremiah Moore says he had he, say, he had said after he came off his injury, he came to the office. Yeah, I, I pointed it out. I know, Jeremiah. When, 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 I, when, I, when I click off this, just you could go back and uh, and just watch, 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 watch the stream again. I'm going to do the same thing just to go over. I always do that one time. Uh, yeah, I, like I pointed out, Jeremiah, when he came back – it was his idea to be a heel. That's why that feud with Seth Rollins fell flat. Nobody wanted to boo uh, 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 Dean Ambrose. So that's, that was on him. When he came back in September, he got one of the loudest pops. It was his idea to be a heel. Uh, again, Vince McMahon, I said, I'll, I'll sum it up. I'll sum it up. We all know Vince McMahon is not a creative genius. It's nothing new. Since 1985, I've, we, I've been hearing about this. He always had good wrestling minds uh, surrounding him. Bruce Pritchard, Pat Patterson, uh, the Briscoes, wh whoever, Michael Hayes, whatever, uh, uh, Bill Watts. Vince is a is is he handles the business side of it. Vince's one Vince's strength is tweaking a good idea and making it better. If he could tweak a good idea and make it very good. He could tweak a very good idea and make it great. Like I said, he's like a hammer. Sometimes he hits a nail on the head. Sometimes he hits a baby in the head. Okay? And uh, just last, la lastly, uh, the, the ratings came out for Raw. Uh, even though uh, Raw won, Raw won uh, the 8 o'clock and 9 o'clock hour, okay, 1 and 2, uh, the 10 o'clock hour came in third, but they still had the most viewers. Cable TV is trash. Hardly anybody watches cable TV. Uh, they, they came in number one and two. Uh, the 8 o'clock hour did 2.265. The 9 o'clock hour did 2.254. And the 10 o'clock hour did 2.051, which is funny. That's where, where uh, the, the Bray Wyatt Firefly Funhouse was. The main event. So people are just not tuning in. They don't care who, who's coming on for the third hour. People are fucking uh, just fatigued. They can always go back and watch YouTube. N N WWE almost doubled the audience for the rest of, of, of the fucking uh, the lineup that night. Nobody's watching, but they come in number one and two and number three. That's why USA pays them a billion dollars. Nobody said uh, Raw and SmackDown are great shows. They're, they're the best of, of garbage. <clears throat> Pro wrestling is fucking trash. I, t I keep telling you people. It's not that good. People want it to be so great. People want wrestling to be so great again. All the, the, the main thing that's missing from wrestling, Pro Wrestling, uh, I keep, ha I've, it's almost like every episode I have to say. There's no larger than life characters. Trust me, if there was, if there was a 28-year-old Hulk Hogan, Jeremiah Morris says similar to Stanley. Then, yeah, maybe, maybe, yeah, yeah. He, St Stanley, maybe he come, uh, he comes up with the with, with an idea, or he tweaks the idea to make it great. Uh, listen, 
Uh, I've been I've been on here uh, almost 40, 45 minutes. Uh, if, you, if, if you want to hit the replay, go. But I guarantee you, if there's a 28-year-old Hulk Hogan, if there was a 25-year-old uh, Rock, a, a lot of these problems would be swept, just like they 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 have they had they were in the 80s, just like they were in the in the late 90s. Again, go back. I said it, May 10th, 1999, the highest rated rule of all time. Go back and watch that on the network. It wasn't that good. It was a lot of talking. But when you have a Stone Cold and a Rock, uh, it, it, it tends to hide a lot of things. That's the problem with pro wrestling today. That's the problem with WWE today. There's no larger-than-life character. Uh, and it was funny. I, I can't believe I had to mention this. It, he, he, of course, Dean Ambrose say in this interview he does he he's not either he's too stupid or he won't mention that fucking the problem why the problem is the problem with the show that's killing show no how about the problem is fucking pushing Roman Reigns but he, of course he's not going to say that he can't say that because wrestlers will never I I keep saying it wrestlers will never say anything bad about their fellow wrestlers because. That is a cardinal sin. You're fucking with somebody's money if you badmouth come out and badmouth somebody, or if you say anything negative about a fellow wrestler in the business, you're fucking with their money. If Dean Ambrose came out and said in that interview, "Yeah, well, you know, uh, yeah, of course he, 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 uh, the, he could talk about Brock because everybody shits on Brock because Brock is bulletproof," but if he, what if he would have said? Yeah, you know, he fucking, uh, they keep insisting on going with Roman Reigns every fucking day, every fucking month, every fucking year. The guy's horrible. I got more talent in my thumb than Roman Reigns has in his whole body, but they keep pushing Roman Reigns. Who can't get over by himself. So before you fucking come out and uh, people come out and get all giddy, because analyze that, analyze those things. All right. If you, uh, 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 we went 45 minutes. I, I've said a lot. Uh, like I said, if you just joined the replay, you could have, uh, click the replay and watch all your stuff. I'm going to do it uh, as soon as I click off. I'm going to watch the replay. And if you comment, I'll, I'll comment along with you. All right. Thank you. Have a great day. And we'll see you uh, probably Sunday or Monday. Good night. <laughs>